Hey, Snow Tracks, Super Tracks YouTubers. It's time to do our review, drum roll please, of the new Polaris 850 XC Indy. And uh, I promised you a week ago when we did the review of the XC 600 Indy that as soon as we got our first 850 that I'd take it for a good pull for you. I know, it was really nice of me to do that. And uh, I'd take it out and try and get some impressions for you. So I did. We, we got this unit two days ago. Yesterday I rode it. 100 kilometers uh, for you south of the border, that's 60 miles. And uh, I've got some, some first impressions for you. This is our first 850. We have uh, two more coming. And uh, it's really cool that this one's an XC because that's the one that everybody's talking about. So let's go up front. And uh, as I promised you when we talked about the 600, we got to talk about uh, the motor more than the chassis and suspension. If you want to go and watch the uh, XC 600 review, indie review then i talked a lot about the chassis because the motor is pretty familiar this is it this is the patriot 850 this is what all you polaris nut bars have been waiting for and you want to know whether it's worth the wait well uh i can conclusively tell you now now that i'm riding uh i have ridden a full production uh xc850 that the weight has definitely been worth it this thing rocks right out of the box uh it actually works better than the pre-production prototypes that we rode last spring and late last winter. This thing uh, has got just exceptionally great power, but really nicely managed power. And this may be kind of the first of a new generation. And, and I know everybody who's a Skidoo guy saying, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Skidoo's got an 850. And they do, and it's a good one. However, there is a profound difference in the way this engine delivers its power compared to the Skidoo 850, the Rotax 850. So you want to know what's the difference? The difference is, is at trail speeds from engagement, which I measured to be at about 35, 35 to 3700 RPM, from engagement to 6000 RPM. This is a very gentle uh, responding engine, very linear. The throttle response is very proportionate to the amount of throttle pressure or throttle movement you're giving it. After 6,000 RPM, this thing beats its fist on its chest and it's gone. And there's a real profound uh, acceleration of the RPM. The motor revs out at 7,750, which is a little bit lower than most of Polaris's 800s uh, in the past. And it pulls like a tractor. The only thing I could compare it to was it's got sort of turbo-like power. The Yamaha Arctic Cat uh, turbocharged motor has a, a very uh, gentle uh, response down low, but once it gets roll, once you get into the RPM and the boost picks up, it really pulls hard. There's a similarity there to what's going on with uh, with this uh, 850 Patriot. So the Patriot engine. Here's a, a kind of an interesting bit of trivia for you. This sled feels when you ride it. Honestly, it doesn't feel any different than the 600. I was shocked yesterday. I experienced that, but it's been like eight, nine months since we, we last uh, rode this machine. This, this sled feels really nimble and light. Well, here's why. It only weighs, and the argument rages on, it seems, with, it depends on who you talk with at Polaris. It's either one pound more or one pound less than the 600. This new engine is very, very rationalized. No external cooling hoses per se. A lot of reduction in the casting size of things, kind of shrink wrap looking motor. I'm gonna give you a peek. No, I'm not. How can I give you a peek? It's almost gone. You can hardly see it. It's way back in there and it's way low. Here is the, uh, the latest rendition of the Polaris clutch with a bigger post and bigger bearings in the bottom and the uh, sport of snowmobiling's most ginormous drive belt. This is a huge drive belt. And Polaris guys were telling us at uh, the factory last spring that this drive belt is the real deal. This is a really, if, if broken in, let me, let me preface this. If you're the kind of guy who gets your sled, backs it onto the lake, dumps it off the trailer, takes it out and tries to go 120 miles an hour right away, you are not going to get belt life no matter whose belt, no matter what sled. You've got to break in your drive belt, okay? So that's just a, that was no charge, anecdotal. Okay, so you, you, uh, the Polaris new drive belt is fatter, thicker, and bigger than any drive belt that they have produced before. Um, I can't quantitatively say that it is the biggest drive belt in the industry, but it would be among the biggest. So the motor, the other key thing about the motor to keep in mind is the way it's mounted. This engine is mounted differently than the 800. 
It's held in place differently. It doesn't use a torque stop. Torque stops tend to generate a lot of vibration into the chassis because essentially what they do is they're on the left bottom side of the crankcase near the clutch. When the motor gets, when you're honking on the thing and you're really, you're really giving it throttle, the motor backs up against the torque stop and then all the vibration in the motor goes through the torque stop into the chassis. It's kind of an archaic thing, but pretty much everybody uses a torque stop. There's no torque stop here and belt center to center and alignment remains really consistent. This is a proprietary mounting system that Polaris came up with for the engine. The engine's low, way low in the chassis. Okay, so uh, apparently on my last review last week of the 600, I let you all down because I didn't start the sled. So I'm gonna do that right now. And there's a method to my madness. So first comment is, I was a little disappointed in the electric starter. I was hoping it was gonna sound more refined. Polaris electric starters sound like eight ball bearings in a gar galvanized garbage can when you run them. They just don't sound refined. They work great, they last, they work all the time. They just don't have that nice kind of high-pitched uh, sewing machine sound to them. That being said, they make up for it with the brake, with the brake and the noise the brake makes. We'll talk about that in a minute. What I want you to notice here is the lack of vibration, a tiny bit of vibration evidence here. Look at the ski tips. Like, what's going on here? The 800 axis shakes like crazy. It does big figure eights with the ski tips. And so do other 850 engines and chassis. These guys have done a great job of isolating vibration. It, it is a much more refined running, idling snowmobile than, uh, than any other big four in the market right now, save four strokes. We can't talk about four strokes. Okay, so here we go. Just show you what's happening out here on the other side. Show you what's happening with the RPM right here on the side. This is such a plus uh, GPS gauge. It's pretty cool. The other thing about this engine that's pretty cool is the way it scavenges and the way it handles throttle inputs and off-throttle uh, idling. When you come to a road crossing, there's no gurgle when you pick up the engage and take off again. It's very, very smooth down low. And for an engine that's in break-in mode, it's very smoke-free as well. Now, next question is, you want to know what kind of gas mileage does it get? <clears throat> I haven't a clue. Um, and we'll try and update you on that. I wouldn't anticipate that this sled, this 850, will get the same fuel economy or as good a fuel economy as the, as the, uh, the Skidoo uh, E-Tech direct injected motor. It's just the uh, efficiencies of that design are, are better on fuel. But uh, you don't always buy this kind of sled for gas mileage. We know this. You buy it for what happens when you squeeze that thing there, the loud handle. So uh, you're not going to be disappointed in terms of the power and acceleration. Actually, I found myself yesterday where I was riding, uh, had some nice long straights and big pulls on hard pack. Man, oh man, do you have to hang on. I mean, you got to make sure you got your mind made up and your hands are wrapped around the bars when you jam it because it really goes. Um, okay, so I want to go back and talk about the brake while we're under the hood and talking about the uh, mechanical side of it. This brake is the best in the industry now. Now that uh, Yamaha is not doing the Apex and the Vector per se, which had jack shaft brakes, this has a jack shaft brake, but it has the coolest noise. And if you ever get a chance to take a pull, if you're not a Polaris guy or girl, uh, you want to take a ride on a Polaris with this, uh, an Axis with this uh, racing brake on it, because it is just such, I, I mean, I don't like to get on the brakes a lot, but I just like listening to it. It sounds so cool and uh, very linear one finger from 100 miles an hour, like literally one finger. It's like power brakes. Um, we've lost something with drive axle brakes in a lot of the competitive snowmobiles these days. Drive axle brakes are, uh, they, they'll stop, but they're difficult to modulate at best, and they require a lot more lever pressure to, uh, to make them, uh, to, to pull down the sled from big digits. So this has got a, a, a class leading, uh, industry leading really now, jack shaft hydraulic brake, really super setup, very, very good. Um, also, 
the uh, and we'll move a little more into the chassis. Of course, you guys can tell watching this that this is a special edition. It's called the Founders Edition. It's very, very slick looking. Um, I'm colorblind, so color doesn't really do a lot for me. But everybody around here says this is the this is the cat's meow. So uh, I I really dig the old school uh, Polaris logo. I think that that's just super cool to see that. Everybody's into retro these days, and and uh, it's a very nicely appointed sled. This, as I said, has the optional gauge package on it. It's uh, Bluetooth compatible, and uh, so you can use, you know, you can be talking and riding at the same time, telling everybody who works for you that you're actually at a convention when you're out enjoying your snowmobile. That wouldn't be truthful. So uh, let's go back into the skid again. I set this one up the same way as the 600, as I told you last week. Took all the compression off the, the walkers, uh, all four shocks, and dropped the torsion springs to the softest setting. This one's in the same setting. Does this thing wheelie? And <laughs> the funny part of that is, is that it couples up hard and it couples up early, but it doesn't matter. There is so much accelerative force. In other words, this thing is clawing so hard and so much inertia that's lifting the front of the sled up, the inertia coming through the torque arm into the chassis, that it doesn't matter that it couples up really hard. It still lifts the skis. Now, it doesn't lift the skis crazy uncontrollably, but it's really fun to goose it. It's really fun to get on the uh, on the gas with this thing, at, uh, with, with this new skid. Now, the uh, Pro XC skid transfers uh, more, it's more transfer reactive, uh, but as a result of that, it has more inside ski lift. This is a very flat cornering chassis with this skid, and that's because it couples up early. And so when you're on the gas and modulating the throttle to get through the corner as quickly as you can, you're not pulling the skis. You've got the skis on the ground. Very little body English is required to counter steer it, and it turns and, and dives to the apex really predictably. More importantly, it exits the corner with the skis uh, less in the air or on the ground, depending on how much uh, jam you give it coming out of the corner. Um, it's got the cool running boards, super sturdy running boards. I mean, these things are crazy rigid, way better than a folded uh, aluminum tunnel extension. I told you before, this is a five piece tunnel. It's made out of two, the tunnel top is made out of two heat exchangers with a small piece down the middle. These are relatively easy to stud, by the way, you would definitely need to invest in some traction studs with this. I would recommend at least two per pitch. Um, what I wanted to tell you, and the reason I'm mentioning that is, is you can see the lake is behind us. There's even guys with ice fish huts out already on our lake here. Um, I've been running it for three weeks, but the snow is not stuck to the ice. And so you can't get a meaningful pull to get a, a top end reading. And we can't have a dig with an 850 skidoo yet. So I know you all want to know which is faster and we are very excited about telling you that and want to let you know too we just have to have this snow freeze down this is wet snow today and i'm crossing my fingers and my toes that if we get a good cold night it'll freeze down and then you can get some uh, attraction at the big end to give you a, a, an impression in terms of uh, how the two compare this being brand new uh, i want to use a uh, uh, i want to use an mxz 850 that's got uh, the clock is, is off it to do some comparison. So stay tuned because we're gonna have more information on that. So uh, setting up the skid, we'll finish off with those thoughts again. Full soft to break it in. If you're a ditch banger, you think you're larger than life and that you need uh, your torsion spring set up or more compression dampening, go ahead. But you're not gonna get the best out of this. You need to, to only incrementally in increase compression dampening on all four shocks. Incrementally, like one click at a time. You might end up at five if like you're maybe a little over nursed but if uh, in reality probably five is the highest setting you should go to even for ditch banging the torsion springs need to break in all torsion springs are like that they need to take a set right now on the lowest setting there's plenty uh, of uh, uh, there's plenty of preload ride height is good but that'll probably uh, sag a little bit and maybe go to the middle setting later on that motor pushes the rear arm really hard. I mean, it, it transfers hard into the back end, way more than the 600 engine. So, uh, okay, so that's the rear suspension. What's the horsepower output? Um, it's very difficult to say because Polaris doesn't want to uh, claim, make a claim, but it's clearly uh, more than the 800. And Polaris told us that it was about 9% more than the, eight, uh, the 800 axis engine. So it puts it somewhere in the neighborhood of high 160s, 
maybe some might argue it's into the 170s. We don't know for sure, and uh, and th there'll be lots of dyno gurus, and there already has been. I've read some stuff on the internet like you have about the, the power, but uh, you want to have the motor fully broken in to, to get a clear answer on that. Um, I guess the most important uh, thing to say about the power is it's enough for now. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, watching us again, and uh, anything new coming along very shortly, and some more information on these sleds on the Polaris uh, 850, we'll be sharing it with you again. Thanks a lot.